where are my panelists? Like so here? first yep. of all, I need to say sorry, but not everyone who is here on the stage are in the pictures, and some of the people are missing, probably had too much party last night. So third, oh, you're here, and I think you need to get mic'd up as well. Yeah. Uh, could we ask you to go backstage to get mic'd up very quickly? <laughs> Okay, so while we wait for Adrian to get mic'd up, I think first I need to introduce other panelists. So first of all, my name is Laura Cornelia in the Medinova, and some of you who were here yesterday saw my keynote and knows who I am. So I run a marketing agency, LKI Consulting, and today I'm going to be your moderator for this amazing panel, How to Enter the Metaverse. So before... Uh, we start. I would like to get a little bit again the audience engaged and ask you a question. So everyone who is sitting here, please raise your hands who before this conference wasn't even thinking of doing something with Metaverse, thinking it's oh, totally not their thing. But now after two days here, you're like, actually, I want to do something. I want to go into this industry. I want to go into this market. Who wants now to enter the Metaverse? Who is now excited? No one... <laughs> Everyone who is not raising their hands are going to be basically escorted from here. So please raise your hands if you want to enter the metaverse, you want to do something. Okay, awesome. We have some people. So definitely this panel is for you. And now as we have everyone here, I would like my amazing panelists to introduce themselves. So Adrian, please, maybe we can start with you. Good evening, everybody. By the way, the first panel after lunch is the hardest. <laughs> No but pressure. this is an opportunity. Um, I'm Adrian Niculescu. I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor and the CEO of Meta Studio. We are building the business metaverse for content creators, a one-of-a-kind project. I'm in blockchain since 2016, and uh, I gather a lot of experience building projects. I'm very happy to be here. We have an amazing atmosphere at this conference. It's one of the most, most beautiful stages. And because I'm, uh, I'm feeling like in the metaverse, maybe I should put this at least for a few seconds, right? Wow. <laughs> nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. And now, I think my mic is not working. Can everyone hear me properly? Okay, awesome. And now we have the troublemaker here. Frank, please Trouble introduce maker. yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm Frank Fitzgerald, founder of Pax World, um, and uh, actually been working with uh, the Serbian group, helping create uh, um, the metaverse for a couple of years now. Uh, actually started it right here, all my crowd there. Uh, <laughs> we actually use this as a team building event as well because we brought everyone in. Um, but yeah, I, I started back in 2017 actually beginning to create the metaverse project that we have today. Um, and you know, before that I was in quantitative finance, which was really interesting. Um, but really wanted to screw around with video games more. Um, and that's where I started with this whole thing. And once COVID hit, we, we exploded. And uh, now, of course, with what we're doing with our, our Web3 land sales and our new metaverse project with our architects from the real world, uh, it's just gone insane. So, and I'm going to try and not cause too much crap here. So, you know, but a little just for you. A little bit. <laughs> Thank you very much. And then we have another lady. We definitely need more ladies in these panels. Alexandra, please introduce yourself. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Alexandra Maric, and um, I'm a consultant in fashion and luxury. Uh, we consult fashion and luxury brands and companies. Um, six years ago, I founded my consultancy, which is called Amazing Company. And um, so far, I have, I have worked with brands like Valentino, uh, like Nike, uh, many, many fashion and premium brands and luxury startups. And um, at the moment, we are creating solutions for fashion and luxury brands on how they can enter this new era and uh, change their, their business as much as they have to in order to, um, to be prepared for what's coming in the future. I'll talk about it more <laughs> later. Um, apart from that, I teach. I teach at some of the best um, fashion design schools in the world. Um, my subject is management of fashion and luxury companies, also in economic schools all over the continent. And also, I'm um, 
country coordinator for Serbia for the largest fashion movement in the world called Fashion Revolution. And um, we fight and we uh, promote sustainability in fashion and luxury. Thank you very much, Alexandra. And now we have the last but not least panelists who were super excited to join. So Arvin, could you please introduce yourself to everyone? Absolutely. So it's great to be here with you guys, uh, internet friends, finally see you in real life. Um, over the past 10 years, I've uh, worked with a lot of uh, public companies uh, as, uh, for their investor relationship marketing. Um, and then um, I got into NFT marketing, worked with about 400 NFT projects. Lots of them sold out. Uh, some of them are uh, top 40 in the open sea. Uh, one of them actually hit number one trending on open sea, number one trending on IC.tools. Um, and focus right now is just with sold out NFTs is, um, you know, it's a bear market right now. So we're trying to figure out um, what to do with uh, selling out. It's not the same as last year. Um, being able to sell out you know, in seven minutes, six minutes. Uh, we're trying to figure out how to do it in the bear market. And um, I hope uh, you guys uh, get a lot of value from this, being able to launch your uh, project successfully as well. Thank you very much. I'm super excited. We have such a different audience here and so many different panelists. We can tackle this question from basically different angles. And I want to start this panel with a little bit more broader question. So Metaverse. Is it just a summer fling, or is it something that is going to stay for a long time? Adrian, what are your thoughts on that? Um, your question is something like, how do you see Metaverse in the next two, three years, or five years? Mm -hmm. And uh, answering to this question, I would say, I don't know. But what is most important, what we here are doing to advance this space? Because it's still in the infancy, we can influence it, and based on our efforts, um, it will happen or not. And I wanted to congratulate the audience because they are investing their time to be here with us, and uh, they are investing in their future, and they will hold a stake in the future. So I would say that it, it, it doesn't matter what we think about the future, what we are doing to advance this uh, medium mm -hmm. of expression, which is Metaverse. Amazing. Frank, what do you think? Is it a long-term marriage type of material I, or just a fling? I get this question all the time. And you know, I, for me, it's always something that I've seen as a progression that's moving forward. I mean, you look at my kids, right? Mm -hmm. They are 15 and 13, and they live in um, you know, Roblox to Minecraft, right? And what I see, really see is just this progression. It was the same thing in, uh, you know, back in the 90s. Right? Everyone said, this internet, is it a thing? And, and that's the stage we're at right now. Um, you got to see what we're doing from, uh, you know, we're moving from this 2D space and going into the 3D worlds, right? And that's what's going to be an expectation of the consumer in, in the very near future on a regular basis. So if you go to a website right now and you see that old Web2 JavaScript straight up uh, flat HTML site, you don't want to put your credit card on it. Mm -hmm. And then very soon, in about five, six years, you're going to see a site that's sitting there in 2D, and you're going to go, oh, this isn't a very good site. Let's, let's make sure that uh, you know, I'm not going to put my credit card in it. And I think that's the progression that we're going to see over here in the next couple of years. And so, no, I'm fully in the metaverse. You're fully into metaverse. Alexander, you work a lot with fashion. So maybe fashion and luxury is going to basically influence the metaverse. What are your thoughts on that? Is the metaverse here to stay? Um, judging by the amount of investment that uh, fashion and luxury companies are already making in the metaver different metaverses, uh, because it's, it's decentralized at the moment, um, I, I, I'm judging that it's definitely going to stay. And we're going to see a lot of developments. I, I, I feel like, I, I know some people uh, think that it's not going to stay, that um, it's kind of going to fail in some way, but uh, I believe uh, the new generations won't even ask us, and uh, uh, we can have our opinion, but it's definitely here to stay. Arvin, everyone is here to stay. What about you? Yeah, I, I'm in agreement with the rest of the panelists. Of course, in fashion like Adidas and so many other companies, even outside fashion, already investing in buying lands on Sandbox, Decentraland, and... Um, world. 
you, being Sorry. yeah, <laughs> uh, and <laughs> and being being with like you know working with public companies, I know that they're not uh, just you know doing whatever. You know they they're they're thinking things through. Uh, they know what's coming six months, a year, a few years in advance. Um, and so to follow them and just knowing that what they're what they're about to do is actually has some substance to it. Um, is, is giving us more confidence to know, okay, this is actually going to stay as well. And then plus, everything that comes with the NFTs and um, what uh, solutions NFTs are actually solving in addition to just, you know, the JPEGs that we're buying and maybe some of you guys thinking we can just uh, screenshot it. Um, a lot of other uh, use cases are for NFTs in the metaverse as well. So it's all a, a combination of things that are here to stay. Um, it's just a matter of uh, time that we get that mass adoption. Just like how in the past, email was a thing where a lot of people resisted to. Now, um, it's not a thing anymore. Um, Metaverse, and especially because of Facebook, as how just uh, they're distributing it with the large distribution they have already, um, it's, going to be the, it's going to be a thing that we don't have to question it anymore. And it's just a matter of time. The, the one thing I do want to say, though, is that question is sort of loaded in this group. Right? Because we're all mm -hmm. here. Yeah. We all believe that this is the next thing for the metaverse. I think the biggest problem that we're going to find is trying to get the, that uh, general consumer and people to believe and know what the metaverse is. And that education of the consumer is going to be the most difficult part. Definitely. Totally agree that education is number one thing to basically preach and attract more people here. So everyone in the audience, I ask you, when you get home, think about one person you can basically bring to the dark side, to the metaverse side, and convert them. Give them opportunity to share what you learn. It's all about sharing the knowledge. And what we see from the marketing agency perspective, as we've been in a crypto industry since 2016, is kind of the same pattern emerges where more and more brands are coming there, investment coming there, as Alexandra said very well. And people want to explore. People want to see what's out there and what are the opportunities. So speaking about opportunities, I would love to ask the panelists, if you would be just starting now in the metaverse, what would you do? What are the biggest opportunities that everyone here in the audience can think of and maybe build an amazing business to grow this industry? Who, is, who wants to start first? I'll go first. Please. Okay. Uh, my advice would be to uh, try to do something different, of course. Uh, this will be a chance for us as persons, uh, as people, but also as companies and brands to, um, to develop our reputation from scratch in a way, to do something differently, to, uh, to build communities, to connect to our clients or other people in a new way. And this is, this is why you shouldn't, I would just, um, I apologize to the people who are listening to my lecture today if I repeat myself, but you should just think outside of the box and you should do something that is innovative. Don't just uh, replicate your physical presence uh, into the virtual presence, because then, uh, it, to me, it's kind of stupid. Um, that, that we don't want that. If we ha have a chance to do something new, if we have a completely new universe that we can build our presence in, uh, then do something different. And um, uh, try to build, for, for luxury and fashion brands, it's important to try to build experiences. Uh, just as we uh, attempt to do that uh, all the time in the physical world, experience is number one when it comes to fashion and luxury shopping. Uh, but how we can build this experience in the metaverse, something that is not going to be completely different from what our clients can experience in the physical world. So uh, that, would be my, <laughs> that would be my advice. Arvin, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so just going off that, being different, also being first <clears throat> is another thing. So for a lot of people who were you know, buying into the blue chips um, and now they're very happy, although past few days or maybe past few weeks, not so much. Um, but uh, in general, just being the first person, being at least the uh, early adopters, and this is true for any, any social media platforms you can think of as well, like uh, back in 2009, uh, Facebook was heaven, right? So now maybe not so much anymore. Maybe TikTok is the, uh, is the new thing right now. But uh, uh, just being the early adopter is actually very important. Uh, not necessarily saying, obviously, go and buy everything that's out there um, just to be the first person. But um, certainly um, 
doing your research and just seeing, okay, if something has value and just being that first in the, in the first batch of people who are actually getting into it at the earliest stage um, is certainly something, ha if I were to go back in time, I would, for example, buy a lot more land. Um, that's, that's something well, I would... And, and going off what you were saying there, I think that it's a, <laughs> a, you asked what, what would we build in the metaverse? And it, for me, it's more like it's building a community. Mm -hmm. Right, because what we're building are communities where people can meet and see each other and do things. It's not. It's everyone likes to say, "Oh, it's about the architecture that you're doing, and it's about like the the world that you build, or it's about the content that you have there." And it is. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's definitely a point of attraction to get people in there. But I think what we're actually building is a world for people to interact. Just like we came here today, I think that's the exact same thing I'm going to be doing when I go into any of the metaverses that are out there, which I look at as different cities, and I'm gonna to go to different areas for different things. Mm -hmm. And um, I think building that community and that interaction of people is actually what we need to focus on uh, at this point, right? Uh, more so than what we're actually going to build from a content perspective as much, if that makes sense, on a broader scale or at a higher level. Yeah. I definitely agree on the community. Yes. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say, going off that, a lot of people are right now are so worried about you know all these effort that they put into building communities um, and whether that's gonna go to waste. Uh, so just being in the inter internet marketing for the past ten years, building communities will never go to waste. So you can always do something with your community as long as you find some problems that they have, uh, provide some solutions for them. You're gonna be golden. So. I think a lot of people right now are so worried about, okay, are they going to sell out? Um, whether it be it, you know, the collection or whether it be it the uh, coins that they have, whatever is happening with, with the you know, uh, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, um, the, the bear market, um, just focusing on actually building the communities is just going to take a lot of worry away. Uh, you're going to be able to just say, okay, well, I'm not doing things for nothing. And when, when you, wait, sorry if I, I keep going, but uh, when you think about the old, or the, the video game market back in the day, right? Some of the most successful games out there, like World of Warcraft or whatnot. World of Warcraft is a great game, but what it actually did was it created guilds, it created people, mm. it connected groups that actually interacted and talked with each other. And that's why that game is still being played today, right? They, you can create great content and put it out there, but people aren't going to go visit it two or three times, but they will go with their friend or want to show their friend or show those people. And that's why I think it's so important. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I agree. Definitely. Adrian. What I wanted to add is that um, you see that humanity evolves and all the time, time they are new mediums of communication, of expressions, new ways we digest content, we learn about new things. And you need to decide if you want to be a user, if you want to be an investor, if you want to be a creator or an entrepreneur or a mix of all these things. And the first thing you need to do is to educate yourself. And it's not easy. It's easier to binge on a movie in a weekend instead of, uh, I don't know, reading books, uh, searching through YouTube videos to learn about this new industry. But it will pay off. And once you are doing that, you need to understand how you can uh, add value. Because if you don't add value, it will be just the next fad, right? Even with NFTs, you create a collection, it can gather a lot of hype, but at the end, the ones which will uh, uh, pass the test of time will be the ones having a utility. And sometimes the utility is just entertainment. You know, because people today, instead of putting money down to buy a house, they buy an expensive NFT. Because it's easy to show off, to take your uh, phone and to show it to all your friends or to put it on Facebook, on Twitter as your profile. So automatically you will show to the other people that you have an expensive NFT which you can use as your profile on social media which is pretty cool. But my angle is always to educate yourself, get out of the comfort zone, because in the comfort zone, there's no growth. 
I totally agree with Adrian that all NFTs started first as a cultural thing. It was more nice picture, what you have, you show off, you can put it as a Twitter picture, you can share and have the sort of social status. But nowadays, it all goes up to the utility having the value. And even during these days at the conference, a lot of NFT creators even approached me and they said, hey, Laura, really want to start doing some day NFTs for metaverse or whatever. Can you help me out? And the first question which I had is like, what utility your NFT has? What are going to be the benefits for these people who are going to buy your NFTs? Because this is basically the underlying thing. You're not going to be successful if it's just going to be a pretty picture. You're like a year late. And speaking about the opportunities as well, I wanted to mention one thing, which I think I'm mentioning in already like a fifth uh, conference that I'm speaking. Whoever is going to create a very easy to use hardware to experience metaverse, they're going to be the billionaires of tomorrow. Because nowadays, when you think about a metaverse, we think about huge Oculus glasses. You think about something big that you probably look funny using, and it's not comfortable. So whoever is going to create something easy, like regular sunglasses, something think about Google Glass, that's a huge opportunity. So something who has a little bit more of technical background, definitely worth thinking about. But besides that, let's go back to our uh, conversation. So nowadays, still, Metaverse is run by the independent creator. Still, there are smaller brands, smaller people from like uh, small companies are doing it. How will the Metaverse change when the large brands will come having huge budgets, have big marketing teams, and huge impact? What's going to be then? Frank, you are smiling. I think you have something to add. I always have something to add, unfortunately. Um, no, I mean, I think there's a huge gap right now in the understanding and the education of these large banks and whatnot. I used to work for these guys, right? Um, and trying to get them to move, it's still a, a year mm -hmm. process when you're doing a lot of these things. But I think you're seeing an opportunity right now where people are trying to even circumvent some of the, let's call it gigantic corporate, mm -hmm. you know, things just so that they can be first movers in the metaverse. Um, the problem is, from uh, blockchain, the infancy of the technology that's out there at the moment, to what you actually need in corporate worlds to actually run this stuff, um, people are building things that the technology's not there yet. You know, I, I see that we're sitting in, uh, in the 90s again, where you know, I used to click that image and it took five minutes for it to download that one picture, right? Um, but that's gonna change really rapidly and soon. So, I, I think it's, it's about how do we onboard these groups in a very easy way? How do we educate those users in order to, uh, to get there, uh, even on the corporate level or you know, even in fashion world, even though they've been very uh, quick to move? Yeah. Um, but now you, we're even seeing large banks. Uh, you know, we're in Switzerland. We know a lot of the large banks there. And they're all wanting to jump on this right now. Um, but go but ahead. When it comes. Can I? Yeah, sorry. Uh, when it comes to uh, large brands, fashion brands are already there. Yeah. Uh, but they're kind of doing it in a shy way, I have to say, because they don't want to ruin their reputation because of the kind of pixelated experience that we still have in some of the metaverses. Um, uh, we even had, I, I, I believe that fashion and luxury, uh, namely fashion, was uh, one of the first movers at the moment because they are, um, they are, they have, they are at the forefront of the industry, other industries. Uh, Which is crazy at the because they actually have to do the whole thing in blocks, right? And yeah. like most dresses and nice the yeah. fashion things aren't in blocks. So it's getting that technology there. Uh, as well. The technology is still uh, catching up because it, it Honestly, it doesn't look good. This is why the co some of the companies are still very shy because if you have an outfit that actually does not look good in the central land, for example, we just had the first Metaverse Fashion Week not even two months ago, and the experience was not so great. Yeah. Um, the brands that were there actually, and the, the audience that was there was not the fashion crowd. It was just people that were hanging out in the central end. So basically, um, the first companies that enter the metaverse are the ones that have to be there. They have to get their foot in the door because of their communities, like Nike and Adidas, for example. But we're still waiting for the big fashion players when they enter, that will mean that the experience uh, is becoming much better. Let me introduce you to my character artists. They're right over there. So. <coughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and also going off that, uh, so a lot of companies already invested. And so the new companies that are coming in, they're just kind of following the other companies because they know that they, they don't want to fall behind. Um, and then also, um, so running a lot of uh, ads for public companies, 500K plus a month, um, I actually managed to have people like, uh, where I can see some of the ads that are being drafted in the past year, back in November, for some large companies. Um, and they were, so before even they would announce anything about uh, what they're going to do in the actual like, physical world or in the virtual world, they already planned everything. So it's not that so much of if you're not hearing about a specific company that's not out there, it's not so much of that they're not doing anything. They're actually planning month and month um, in advance, and they already had, so this company specifically, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to name, but they were already um, having um, advertising on LinkedIn uh, out of all platforms, because they were going for very specific people, um, and they wanted to target professionals and just educate them on what the metaverse is, what the NFTs are, and then later on they were going to just actually roll out some of the part of their business as form of whether it be it NFTs or whatever is happening in the, in the metaverse. So it's not so much, it's just, you, if you're not seeing it, it doesn't mean that they're not there. Um, they're actually, a lot of them are actually in the background. They're, they're working on creating things. And as some of the panelists were just saying, they are afraid because they, they may get, get a lot of backlash from their, or the fans that they already have in the, uh, in the real world. Um, and then they may not just follow through in the virtual world for them. Um, and so they have to be careful and then plus, you know, let's say NFT communities or the uh, metaverse, they may have some um, negative connotations uh, around it as well. So they're very, uh, they're, they're tiptoeing around this, right? So they're very careful before getting in. So that's what's taking them time. It's not that they don't want to get in. Um, I mean, I'm not speaking for all of them, but there's several of them that they have already have uh, things in place, but they haven't launched anything yet. And uh, we actually do that quite a bit, where we've had people, like we you know, get them into our metaverse, and it's the first time they're ever in a metaverse, and we call them metavirgins, right? <laughs> And, uh, and it's actually fun to just watch that onboarding process where they're like, they, first they don't even know they're going into the metaverse. Then they go into it and they're like, what is this? How do I move? And, like, and, they, and they're looking at it. And then you see that thing that goes off in their light bulb on, the, on top of their head as you're, you're video chatting with them. And you're like, and it's just, you know, it's my mom when she first went in. And, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, in her 70s. And she was like, oh, now I get this. Now I see what you're doing and why this is useful. And that's that sparkle in their eye did is the like thing it? I just she did. She loved really? it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still can't figure out how to use the keyboard to move yet, but she's uh, get she's there. getting there. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, Adrian. What are your thoughts? What are big brands bringing to the metaverse? I will uh, I would like to share in just a few minutes. Uh, you can call them secrets, insights. Uh, based on uh, my advisory work with many, many startups over time. In business with small brands, big brands, there is always David and Goliath um, fight, you know? Every huge company was once a small company, right? And the theory says that in an established market, the startups should not exist. Okay. But one of the six human needs is the variety. It means that all the time we are looking for new things. So if you go to an established fashion show, I'm not a specialist in fashion, but I had some uh, marketing clients over time. If you go to a huge fashion show, the organizer will tell you that around 20% of the brands are new all the time. And they have space in the market. If you want to create a metaverse, let's say, or if you want to develop a site of a metaverse, because uh, it looks like there are hundreds of thousands of metaverses, look for a niche. Don't do a metaverse for everybody. Mm -hmm. And in, in our process, because it's not a secret, we did a business metaverse first, and second, a, a sub-niche, a metaverse for content creators. And a sub-niche of the sub-niche is for the content creators who want to uh, uh, feel work like playing. Niche, sub-niche, and the sub-niche of the sub-niche. So if you're a startup, or if you just have an idea, 
don't be paralyzed seeing all the major players. Start doing. Create a pitch deck, create a white paper, look for investors, come at such a show in the room if you don't have funds for sponsoring. Knock on the door of established brands, they may buy you. They may uh, put you, you in their accelerator and incubator because the large uh, corporate brands now, they breed startups in accelerators and incubators. Look for government-backed programs for startups. Do something. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, the metaverse is like fire. You can use it for good things or for bad things. And it's like Wi-Fi. It's available for everybody. You have access to it. You need to understand what you do with this opportunity. If you will not do anything, the results will be that the supremacy of the big brands will be there, and you will lose your chance to change the world. So do something, and don't be paralyzed, because you are too little looking at the successes of the big brands, because um, every such success has 10, 20 years of hard work, of failures. Don't look at all the billionaires from crypto or from NFTs. Look at their biographies to see how many years they struggled like crazy. <laughs> and this will give you courage to go further. I think everyone here should be making notes because this is a person who is total OG of the crypto and blockchain industry in the market since 2016. <laughs> and I definitely agree with everything what he says. And nowadays, I see definitely a pattern of when the crypto started, of this small brand starting out, trying things, testing, and you should do that too. Just test, see what works, what doesn't work. It's okay to fail. It's okay to try, understand that something doesn't work, and try again. And talking about failure, talking about finding the right path, I would love to ask other panelists here, uh, together with us, so what are the things that you see are the key pillars of building a successful project. What are the tips you can share that the audience later will not only just make notes, but will implement it and down the line they're like, oh my God, I remember this guy told me to do this specific thing and now I have this amazing project. What are those secrets? People. Getting good people. That is uh, the, one of the, the, the hardest challenges to, to keep right um, and letting those smart, intelligent people run with the project. Right, um, and, and I think that's one of the challenges that everyone's facing here right now. I mean, anyone here tried to hire a blockchain developer recently? Not an easy thing to do. Uh, from just navigating through the fraudulence to the, uh, you know, and, and just finding the general people mm -hmm. that are out there that are, are correct. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, I think what you said with basically any traditional startup is what you were going on. I completely agree. Um, but I think that one of the hardest things beyond that, um, on that general building of a large company, um, is actually just choosing the opportunities correctly. Because right now you can do so much with the metaverse. And every single time you talk to someone, they have another idea, which is just as good as the last one. And if you try and do everything, you're going to fail. Um, and it's trying to keep those focused in the right areas, which I think is extremely important. I definitely agree on the people nowadays hiring the right people and just letting them do their thing, not micromanaging, is definitely the number one priority. Uh, Alexandra, what are your thoughts? What are the key things of success? Um, I, I completely agree about building teams and um, letting people do their work and finding the right people with the right competences. Um, that's going to take you a long way. Uh, I would add also having, having the strategy, which would, it should be lo it's very logical, but um, it's not. I see a lot of impulsive behavior because a lot of people think, oh, this, is, this, this can be my cash cow. I can make quick money on this, and um, I would advise you if you're if that's your uh, attitude, don't even don't even <laughs> do it. Try to do something uh, that is actually going to. Uh, um, it doesn't matter even if it takes you more time to enter the metaverse, but uh, bring uh, new and real value. Don't just replicate maybe what everybody else is doing. And I'm sure that uh, this resonates with a lot of you because this kind of behavior uh, has been happening a lot with launching NFTs. Everybody wants to launch an NFT now. 
So basically have a, a kind of a long-term strategy, try to uh, be innovative, try to do something new, try to find a solution to a problem and then um, solve it through the new technologies. So uh, yeah, that maybe. Arvin? Yeah, going, going off that, um, definitely it's a very important thing that you want to stick with your own project. So there are several projects I've worked with that they sold out. And um, you know, the time comes where I ask them, hey, you, you're going to do another launch? And they're like, mm, I don't really like my community. Like, I, I just kind of want to do another project, because that's actually a lot easier, a lot easier to manage it. right? Cause so now you actually have to deliver on everything on your roadmap. And maybe that's not something you want to do. Um, and so, um, which is root of the problems that we have, like where people are skeptic in this community, that's literally what it is, is that people are not really thinking long term um, what they want to do with their community and really stick into their community. And also even their people too. So um, they hire a bunch of people, they have great competency, um, and then later on, uh, they're just like, you know, um, they, maybe they, they earn too much, or maybe um, they're not working as hard as they should be doing, right? And then so they let them go, and so this, they, the whole team kind of collapses, right? And then they can't deliver on promises, and then that's, you know, that's where it comes uh, to the problems of uh, people saying, okay, there are a lot of scams going on in this market. Not necessarily they intend to do it, but they kind of work their way into it. Um, and so, um, obviously, tomorrow I, I have a workshop where I just talk a lot more into like, what you do as far as marketing NFT projects. But um, one of the things uh, that I tell people is just having the art is not enough, just having the team is not enough, um, just having the utility is not enough. And maybe I just ask you guys, like by show of hands, how many of you have seen a project that done everything right and then didn't install out? Like if you just like look around you, you see like people, and you see people that actually, um, you know, in this in this community, they've they've seen it. So there are actually uh, projects exist that they're doing everything right, but they still don't sell out. Okay, so a lot of pieces that goes into it, and if you just thinking about just doing the bare minimum, um, and then uh, just you know getting away with just some uh, basically just like a cash grab uh, community, then it may just not work out. Um, and so just really. Um, knowing that this is, this is what you want to do for, literally, this is your life. Like, you want to actually stick with your community for the rest of your life. That, I think that's something, a good attitude uh, to have uh, to go forward. And then that everything else will solve itself. You find the people, you find the resources. Um, there's a lot of money. There are investors. They bring you money. There are great people that they work for you and do everything that you need to do. And there are a lot of enthusiasts in this community just like people here um, that they want to communicate um, with you, like uh, they, they want to participate. Um, and so, so you have all the pieces. It's just that you got you to gotta know that you're really in it. Um, that you don't want to just do some you know, cash grab community and then just uh, let the community go. So basically, you need to have the right people, the right attitude. You have to build the comfortable community, community that basically wants to interact with each other. And one more thing I highly, highly recommend to do is look into market sentiment and where the overall market is doing. So if you're building a product, biggest recommendation that we as an agent always do, find a few projects that are in a similar space, in a similar niche, doing something similar, who are targeting your audience. They might not be your direct competitors, might be in other industry, but someone who's basically audience gonna buy their, let's say, NFT, their tokens, are the same, and look how they perform. Look when they launch. If they launch and they sell out straight away, that means it's a very, very good timing for you to launch as well. And if they're not selling out, that's not the time. There are, for example, a few very nice women led NFTs when there was like a woman month, and they all sold out just because they were women led projects, and that was on the hype. And then other projects which follow three, four months later, they didn't succeed. So always look into market sentiment. What are other people doing? What are they buying and why they're buying that? And now I want to kind of continue what uh, Adrian said about the industries. And I want to have this like a very quick fire question for everyone here in the panel. What, are, what do you think are the tr three top niches, sub-niches industries on the metaverse that everyone needs to focus on? What are the next big things there? Communication with other people, social networking, could be healthcare. What are your thoughts? Access to information, I think. Uh, just um, 
through communication with the other individuals that are going to be there, because I'm sure even now you can meet so many interesting people there. If, if you, so you have the opportunity to interact with uh, various kinds of people, with various uh, knowledge. So I think this, this might be, the, my, that's my top of mind uh, thing that, that, that I thought of, um, that just communication and interaction that uh, even could be good for your, I don't know, if, you, if you're a consultant like me, just hanging out there and talking to people, you might, uh, um, you might find out new things about the services that people might need. Um, somebody asked me today after my lecture uh, to give them an advice what to do uh, if they want to enter the metaverse with their business, and I asked them, have you, have you been hanging out there? And they said, no. I said, so just spend some time there and see how it works and see, uh, as you said, what the, what the sentiments of the crowd that is there is and what do they need. It's like a market research. So this, these are opportunities that we don't have. Uh, now in the physical world, you have to come to a conference and network. There you have such access to all kinds of information and know-how. And I'm sure that people that hang out there at the moment are very open to communicate that information because uh, that's the vibe kind of that's, uh, that's been happening there. It's education. Yeah. Right? And it's education in all different senses of that, whether it's a school system, whether it's a conference, whether it's just meeting other people. I always said that I always never came to conferences to actually listen to speakers. Um, I actually come to just meet the people late night and like hang out and talk with them. And I think that's the opportunity that the metaverse provides because I actually learn more from those people that I meet at, you know, two o'clock in the morning at the bar than I actually learn, you know, actually sitting here watching people on stage. I mean, um, and that's just how I work, right? I never liked teachers as well, and I never liked traditional schools. I, but it, when I went to university, I learned more from the guys that I went to school with talking late night at 2 o'clock in the morning about finance or technology or, where, or you know, cytochrome P450 molecules, right? Like, and I wasn't even in science, right? Um, so I, I think that's the real opportunity here is you go from Web 2, which is, hey, let's post information up, to Web 3 and what we're doing with the metaverse is more about the interaction and education between individuals. And eventually, artificial intelligence, which ends up being a real problem because we're gonna go meet artificial intelligence engines that we don't actually know aren't human beings. And that's gonna happen in the next five years. Definitely. Adrian, what are your thoughts? The three industries I see the most promising for this space are entertainment with music and uh, movies and uh, all the other assets built around them, real estate and the monetiz monetization of content creation. And just to add an answer to the previous questions, because I uh, didn't have the opportunity to answer, uh, I see two key ingredients for success, uh, mindset and relentless execution. Without those, you will never succeed. Definitely. Arvin? Yeah, so gaming, uh, of course, it's a multi-multi-billion dollar industry. Um, and the, you know, I think that's definitely one, one area. Um, and then fashion, so not only just because um, you know, the pro these big companies, they want to get in, they want to be relevant, but also just the authenticity of the brands is a really big problem. We don't have a solution apart from NFTs to actually solve that. So I think that's really a big deal. Um, and then, um, of course, uh, you know, uh, as far as like, so entertainment and fashion, um, uh, but also uh, music, like uh, as uh, uh, another pan panelist mentioned. So a lot of uh, artists for years, they've done things in a very specific way, which is they have uh, some middleman, they can't build their own communities. Um, and so now they are actually able to do that. They, they have more freedom. Um, so the artists themselves or the um, people who are involved with it, they actually can uh, make more money they can build their own community the way they like it. They can produce whatever they want. Um, and those are all, all great things for just community as it's evolving. Um, and so I think those are the, I would say those are the three. OK, so entertainment, gaming, education, connectivity, these are the opportunities for you. And as we have the last two minutes before we're going to be kicked out of the stage, I want to ask everyone here to give 
one last piece of advice, very short, one sentence, something, if people didn't listen and were on their Instagram throughout our panel, really would hear and take home. So please, everyone, close your phones. I see who are on the phones here and listen to these last key bits of really g good, good wisdom. Frank. Um. I think the, the, the key wisdom here, if we're looking at the metaverse and whether or not it's going to be successful, and when you look at the NFT market, no one ever talks about this, and why everyone's so excited about this is that it brings together utility NFTs, art NFTs, gated access, and group community NFTs, and puts it all in one space. Yeah, I guess I go next. Uh, so the, it's very important to realize this is a decentralized community that we're building, so there's no authority in this. So you got to do your part. Um, and so if you go on Twitter talking negatively about other projects, um, that's just going to bite everyone you know, in the, in the ass like later on. Um, and so just, just be really mindful that this is your community. And so everything that you do, it just actually has an impact not only on other projects, but also on every one of us. Um, and so really just taking that, just that, have that agency to do things for, for yourself, but also just community as a whole. Alexandra? Um, I would like to leave everybody with uh, a question, actually, uh, just to go and think, since you are all people um, working into getting into the metaverse and crypto, uh, how are we going to solve the interoperability problem between different metaverses? How are we going to, are we going to maybe merge them at one point, and how are we going to solve the, this thing of uh, different presence in different um, metaverses. Adrian? Um, I wanted to share one of the most guarded secrets in the marketing, but I'm not sure if you want to hear about it or not. Do you want to hear about it? Yes. In our minds, as humans, at any moment can fit only seven brands based on our interest, you know? So, if you want to succeed with your project, on that particular niche, you need to become the dominant mind in the minds of the people you want to reach, of your target market. So, you need to design very well your ideal buyer persona, the kind of people you want in your project, as customers, as users, you define a, uh, a profile and you will know what these people think, what things keep them awake at night, what triggers will make them to take an action. When they uh, 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 browse Facebook, they see a text and they stop. It's your text designed for them. Where you find these people to create uh, a certain uh, number of users or clients, uh, to, to make your project take off and become the dominant brand in their mind when they are thinking about what you want to sell. Uh, if you see in different niches, category kings, projects uh, uh, on top, huge distance between them and the second and the third position, they drill down very well this particular thing. Apply this and it will change your business and your life. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, uh, all the panelists. Last piece of advice from me, web to marketing and web free marketing has a one big difference, and web free marketing is all about partnerships. It's all about building connection with influencers, other brands. So please connect with everyone, meet everyone here, take as much information as possible, and please build the big brands of tomorrow. And I think now we have to say a big also thank you for our panelists with a round of applause. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys.